Hi, my name is Ed Loftus. I'm a gastroenterologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I specialize in the care of patients with inflammatory bowel disease, which is Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, and my research focus is in the epidemiology and natural history of IBD. Uh, we recently published a paper in Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled The Effect of Medications on Risk of Cancer in Patients with Inflammatory Bowel Disease, a population-based cohort study from Olmstead County, Minnesota. So in Olmstead County, Minnesota, we have this unique situation where we only have a few health care providers for the entire population of the county. The population is about 140, 150,000 people. There are very few health care providers, and since the 1960s, there has been an NIH-funded study called the Rochester Epidemiology Project, which is basically a linked medical record, uh, or, well, I should say a linked diagnostic index, and it allows us to identify everybody in the county who has ever been seen for a variety of conditions. And over the years, we've developed a population-based inception cohort of patients in Olmstead County who, when they were residents of the county, were diagnosed with either Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. And in this particular study, we were interested in trying to determine what the overall rate of cancer was in this population, and was it higher than what you would expect, and also whether or not any of the medications that we use could, in fact, uh, increase the risk of cancer. And this is important because we know that patients with IBD have an elevated risk of colon cancer, and in the case of Crohn's disease, small intestinal cancer, and because of some of the medications we use, such as immunomodulators and the biologics, such as infliximab, adalimumab, sertilizumab, all of these are purported to increase the risk of certain cancers. So that, that was the main reason for doing the study. So in this cohort, we identified all patients from Olmstead County who were diagnosed with either Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis between 1940 and approximately 2010. And altogether, we had 893 patients in the cohort, and we could follow them through their linked medical record uh, until they were last seen. And altogether, the median duration of follow-up per patient was 18 years, which I think is pretty impressive for a longitudinal study of this nature. And what we did was we compared the risk of cancers to the SEER database. So SEER is uh, Surveillance Epidemiology and End Results. This is an epidemiologic database maintained by the National Cancer Institute. And we compared the number of cancers we would have expected with the actual number that we saw. And what we found was that in Crohn's disease, the risk of getting cancer was 1.6 times higher uh, than what we would have expected. And we used data from Iowa, white patients from Iowa, and it was 60% higher. In ulcerative colitis, there was no increased risk. The, the overall uh, risk ratio was 1.1, and that was not statistically significantly different. So then the second part of the study, we stratified the observation, the person years of follow-up, by which medications they were on. And we grouped medications together, so patients that were on immunosuppressives, such as azathioprine, methotrexate, or mercaptopurine, were in one category of follow-up. And then biologics, such as the anti-TNF drugs, were in another category of follow-up. And what we did is we looked at the cancer incidence while on medications compared to the cancer incidence not on the medications. And we looked at it before starting a medication and after finishing a medication. And what we found was that the risk of melanoma was higher in patients on immunomodulators than either never having been on an immunomodulator or having stopped an immunomodulator, and it was about five times higher. And um, in terms of other cancers, like hematologic malignancies, there was an elevated risk, but it was not statistically significant. And then when we looked at the biologic agents, there was, again, a trend towards an increased risk of hematologic malignancies, but the elevation was not statistically significantly different from one. So in conclusion, we can say that the risk of cancer overall is slightly higher in patients with Crohn's disease. It's not higher 
than what you would expect in patients with ulcerative colitis, and there may be a signal for an increased risk of certain cancers such as melanoma or hematologic malignancies in some of these medications that we use. Now we have to caution, we don't want to scare people to not use these medications. We have to look at the overall risk-benefit ratio, and in most cases the benefit of being on these drugs is going to outweigh the risk of these relatively rare cancer, cancers. I think it was reassuring that overall we couldn't see a significant elevation in risk for all cancers with these uh, agents that we use. I think the paper has strengths in the fact that we actually have a very detailed analysis. We have medication stop and start dates on all of these patients. We know dates of hospitalization, surgery. We have access to the complete medical record. I think the major limitation of the study is that it's a relatively small sample size, 890 some patients, when you're looking at something relatively rare like cancer risk. Um, but I th still think it's uh, an important paper uh, to publish. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.